and I would move ahead to explain how this CRISPR technology or the different tools that are uh, now evolved to enhance the crop improvement uh, in, in case of uh, uh, agricultural uh, acceleration. And uh, as we all know that <coughs> We all know that uh, food, feed, and fuel are the major uh, resources that are provided by plants, and these are the reason or contributors for our uh, progress of human race. And uh, we, we need to know and we need to be aware that uh, as, uh, by 2050, uh, the next 30 years, we will be 9.6 billion. Uh, this uh, creates uh, a demand for crops that is 100 to 110% as of now, and to feed and nourish the burgeoning population, we need, uh, there's a pressing need for new innovative technologies, and this CRISPR is the redeemer. So uh, in the face of climate changes, in the face of shortages in water, in the face of reducing arable land, we need to move ahead. So uh, this is not a very new concept. Uh, the evolu uh, Nature has been altering or rewriting genomes for a very long time, we all know. And this is uh, very well shown by evolution, where different uh, genomic variants for both plants and animals have come up for survival. And you know the examples of the survival of fittest I won't go into, and the different kinds of Darwin's finches that uh, evolved because of the uh, uh, requirement. So uh, also human beings have now imitated this selection. It's, it's an imitation of the selection, why an art artificial selection, why we uh, produce the quantum of crops that are presently be being eaten. They've all originated from their wild ancestors. For instance, the modern-day cro uh, maize crop that Bibiana spoke about uh, is uh, originated uh, uh, in the last 12,000 years from the uh, the, the origin uh, the origin original original crop that is the theosinte. So it's not new. Evo evolution has it, and we have we are just emulating natural mutations. We are just emulating nature. We are not doing anything extra while we are using CRISPR technology. So the artificial selection that is being used, uh, the modern, uh, the, uh, that comprises of the modern uh, uh, techniques, uh, currently uh, are these three. The first generation, the second generation, and the third generation uh, breeding technologies. Crossbreeding, mutation breeding, and transgene breeding. Actually, the terminology itself of editing or developing GMOs, these, these te terminologies also create confusion in the minds of common man. So if we call it, if we accept breeding, cross-breeding, which, which includes the uh, you know, combining of two complete genomes, two separate complete genomes or related genomes, and if we, if, we, if, we, if we look for random mutations that have been used through chemical mutagenesis or through uh, radiations, if we can accept those mutants, why can't we accept the third generation GMOs or the, the, the latest uh, gene editing uh, technology, which is basically uh, emerging as a precision design agriculture for accelerated and sustainable you know, uh, crop uh, de development. So this is, uh, really crucial and it is not only a standalone, it is a, a integration of a deep exploration of functional genomics. You need to need, know the sequences of the genomes. You, there is uh, involvement of this technology, this is part of it. So these, and the final big data analysis, all these together synergize into crop breeding, gives you the technology which is a precision design agriculture, which is not just editing, it's a com combination of all this. So uh, this is just um, all the historical uh, details given by Anna previously, just to uh, tell you that these two important ladies were the uh, contributors to propose this CRISPR-Cas uh, technology for programming editing of genomes. And this um, now we are extrapolating in plants too. So they, they've uh, uh, just explained that they, we can repurpose this, this uh, Cas9 uh, system or the Cas9 enzyme and the guide RNA, a short guide RNA required to direct the Cas9 to create a double strand ray can be repurposed and used further for plant uh, uh, improvement too.
So here you can see the Cas9, the guide RNA coming and hybridizing with the with the, the DNA. This is the target DNA, the the RNA the guide RNA coming in, and and also the target has to have the PAM sequence here. That's important sequence. So this is this in short. So uh, already uh, much has been told, so I'm not going to ta uh, tell you, uh, take much time on this, but this is the important uh, 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 Cas9 system is uh, evolved as an offset of the innate adaptive immunity uh, present in bacteria and archaeas. And they just want to evade uh, bacteriophages and viruses by, by you know, in, uh, during the first attack, just incorporating a piece of this viral DNA, which is known as a target, which also has a sequence aligned to it. This is the protospacer adjacent motor for the PAM. So this is next to this. It, ha it, it is the identified, it, it helps in recognition of this target sequence. And this is known as protospacer in the, in the viruses. When it is incorporated or acquired into the bacterial genome, it becomes the spacer. So the terminology PAM, protospacer adjacent motif, comes because of the, it's, it's a motif adjacent to this protospacer. While it enters into this CRISPR array where there are several Cas genes and there is a tracer RNA and there are several interspaced uh, uh, sequences and there is a CRISPR RNA, there's a complete array. The CRISPR RNAs, the, the tracer RNAs, as well as these uh, interspaces which become spacers finally. So once they are transcribed together, the entire array, it forms a complex kind of a thing which includes the, the CRISPR RNA, the tracer RNA, which is this, and this forms the short guide RNA, these two components, forming the short guide RNA to direct the Cas9 to create a double strand break. And this has been repurposed in animal sciences, in mammalian uh, uh, studies, as well as in plant studies, to create double strand breaks. So what is the, what is the uh, 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 importance of the double strand break is that all these the uh, programmable, whatever uh, previously people have explained, these these have been initially used, their defense talents, and now the CRISPR, all of them have the specific double strand break property, but can be repaired through the endogenous repair mechanism of the cell, either by this non-homologous enjoining, which is error prone, as different uh, uh, insertions or deletions may occur and this may create a stop corona stoppage of the or a knockout of the gene so no f the function gene function will be lost because of this while if you want to improve the uh, precision you give a small sequence that you desire to 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 be replaced inside the native genome and this is known as the homology donor template which creates this precision editing which what which one wants to have so all these uh, are again <coughs> either protein dependent, the, all these endo, uh, site specific endonucleases as we say, SDNs, they are all either protein dependent, protein dependent cre uh, DNA cleavages uh, are uh, evolved because of these and ZFNs and talons are part of that so therefore they are more cumbersome because protein engineering is tough while this RNA dependent and uh, DNA cleavage or RNA dependent RNA cleavage can be effectuated by Cas9 and CPF1. CPF1 is nothing but Cas12A that has been told. So these two are the RNA dependent DNA cleavers whereas this uh, Cas13A or C2C2 is the RNA dependent RNA cleavers that can introduce uh, double strand uh, cleavages in the RNA. So this is just a repetition of the same that CRISPR is more uh, is, uh, is an easiest technology and in plants these two enzymes have been used the most. So the diversity there is there are numerous enzymes available endonucleases available but the Cas the type two and the type five that come in, uh, the, that that are the category that has been uh, cru uh, the crucial edifices that have changed the history of uh, crop improvement because of uh, uh, the simple efficacious manner of these two enzymes as well as their adaptability to multiplexing. You can knock out not even not one, two, three more than that. But there is a, there is a uh, limit to ten genes. But at least at least up to ten genes you can knock out together. So these are the two major crucial enzymes, uh, and uh, this is how it cuts. When the Cas9 creates a cut, double strand break, it creates a blunt end, 
and when the cpf uh, cas tw- uh, cas uh, 12a creates a break it's a sticky end it's a staggered end so it's easier for homology donor repair uh, uh, whereas blunt ends can be uh, can be uh, both ways but it's more prone to uh, non homologous end joining creating knockouts here and this is where you do not want the gene to be knocked out but you want to improve the Uh, the, the 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 specificity or the trait so the, therefore you do not want to knock it out but you want to modify it so this is the way you can modify this is the way you can knock out the function so some uh, uh, some genes which are uh, uh, required to, which are negative regulators of good uh, beneficial alleles can be knocked out directly but those that are not uh, th- they are, they are not uh, negative regulators but they need to be modified so we can use this for modification so the main the double strand break is not the 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 importance importance is the repair the repair creates the mutations and this is where uh, uh, variations come in because uh, with the cross breeding and the mutation breeding technologies create reducing the genomic diversity because we are selecting for only specific alleles and we want all no, only high high uh, yield or high uh, stress tolerance so we we reduce the genetic diversity whereas here lot of uh, variation allelic variation is created so uh, so this this is again how uh, a knockout can happen this can be a specific or tar- uh, a deletion can occur which can be through non uh, repaired to nhg or through Uh, homology donor repair so the most important crucial factors that should be kept in mind for conducting or uh, planning cro- uh, experiments of uh, on crispr editing in plants you need to have the whole genome of that crop in your hand if you do not you cannot proceed with that uh, the second thing is you need to identify the genes specifically those which are negative regulators of uh, of of uh, of beneficial alleles or beneficial genes are the most uh, attractive targets for gene editing so uh, need to look for the negative regulators plus you can also look for single gene traits or multiple gene traits some some uh, traits such as yield and uh, stress are polygenic they are connect they are uh, they are c- controlled by several regulatory networks so uh, knocking out of one gene may not have an effect but people have otherwise shown too uh, however uh, uh, in general the the philosophy, the uh, the recommendation is to for gene knockouts that uh, not to knock out the cutels because they are affecting too many uh, downstream uh, aspects so uh, the there are three levels at which the mutations can occur so the first level is at the gain on uh, at the at the transcriptional level where you can have gain or loss of function the uh, the major uh, in, uh, things that have been covered by ana but i just swiftly move ahead uh, you can create frame shift mutations which will lead to loss of uh, function you can create amino acid substitutions that again can create gain or loss of function for example the green revolution caused by the sd1 mutation in in the crops led to uh, shortening of the height of the plants and led to the uh, green revolution this is because of this that happened naturally but this here you creating similarly if you do not know uh, the res- uh, functional residues of uh, an uncharacterized protein or a gene you can use the entire genome can be o- uh, created into a tiling guide small guide rna array library the overlapping library of small guide rnas can be created transformed into the plant through agrobacterium mediated mut- um, uh, transformation or uh, viralistic and then put into the calli of the of the of the of this uh, plant and then create a mutant population which could be then screened genotypically to fo- uh, to find the beneficial alleles so these are the examples where this technology has been used the loss of gain of function wherein cereals have been uh, in uh, rice has been uh, shown to increase the amylose content which is important uh, resistant starch is important for uh, problems or diseases like diabetes and uh, ckd where, where uh, the uh, the people cannot digest this so they have uh, uh, when they uh, or when the, this is uh, provided there is less spikes and so so this is important in that aspects people have also increased the uh, oleic acid to linoleic acid ratios in soybean through this technology increase the fragrance of basmati rice by knocking out single gene and in increasing this compound which is a uh, uh, contributor of the fragrance also in uh, made these uh, glutinous rich uh, rice as well as waxy corn this cotiva has done 
maybe biryani would know so uh, further there are uh, so many traits that have been improved in rice the cooking quality is, can be has been improved the the, the nutritional content iron zinc content are, people are trying and they have uh, succeeded in some way and uh, f- uh, they've also tried to increase uh, bl- resistance to polygenic uh, traits that are polygenically uh, you know controlled controlled by many genes by single gene knockouts like this one gene knockout uh, created blast resistance in rice so this is very important and similarly they've tried to change the architecture of 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 the uh, the fl- uh, floral architecture of arabidopsis by you know mutating one two genes and creating more branching or or, or trying to uh, de- delay the uh, the flowering so this is all through one gene knockout so th- there is another uh, uh, th- th- this is the gene targeting uh, technology where you you modify the gene you do not knock it out but you modify it for example uh, this in 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 rice uh, has been made uh, tolerant to sulfonylurea herbicide by mutating one mutating one gene in the conserved region so you just mutate the part uh, single conserved region and you create a modification which is t- that the gene becomes tolerant to sulfonylureas so you prevent the your main crop to die you I, these these herbicides are required to kill the weed but it also hampers the main crop so in this way you protect your main crop because whatever the whatever the effect is is uh, you know uh, of the uh, herbicide is affecting the weed as well as the crop so this protects your crop similarly people have tried to uh, swap the promoters of argos 8 uh, gene in maize and this argos 8 gene is uh, is is important for uh, you know uh, drought tolerance why it is uh, reduces the ethylene uh, sensitivity so if you over express this gene you have reduced ethylene sensitivity and you can tide over the drought period so people have tried to over express this by swapping the native promoter of this gene with another uh, promoter like the gos a, gos2 uh, from the same plant and try to increase drought tolerance now the latest technology uh, has uh, again improved further by optimize use of optimizing base editors they can be cytosine base editors or adenine base editors both of them try to uh, uh, use uh, the cas9 uh, nickase where uh, one of the catalytic domains is function so there it won't create double strand breaks but a small nick in one strand so this a cas nickase uh, tagged with the uh, the cytidine deaminase uh, uh, domain fused with it can convert c to t and whereas adenine base editors can convert uh, a to g similarly g back to a and t back to c so these are important uh, where you do not want off targets it reduces off targets to uh, minimal uh, requ- uh, uh, levels uh, further uh, this technology which is another step forward of uh, this base editing is the prime editing recently uh, mit uh, broad uh, broad institute showed uh, this uh, so th- you can see you can specifically remove four nucleotides so previously base editors could only do c to t or t to c or a to g or g to a this can do anything it can do all the eight uh, changes either from c to t t to c t to a a to g g to a whatever you want it's working like a word processor so cas9 used to be uh, labeled as molecular scissors uh, base editors now were termed as molecular pencils this prime editors have been termed as word processor you can individually so this is uh, you know f- for improving the tay sachs disease where four mutations are required so this is the video that they have made so this is simply by not uh, creating double strand breaks simply the prime editing tool nicks one strand of the dna and this nick is caused by the uh, uh, is 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 uh, uh, further uh, you know uh, the sequence is replaced by the edited sequence because there is a reverse transcriptase along with it and this uh, synthesizes the dna inside the cell and this is repaired back the the this uh, n- uh, cut the broken end of the dna the original sequence is removed by the endogenous cell re- endonucleases and this is a uh, structure that is obtained and further you can see here uh, this is the complex that is being used for this prime editing where the rt is along tagged with the cas9 casnicase so 
here you can see the peg rna instead of the short guide rna which has the crispr rna and the tracer rna it is replaced by a prime editing rna which has two two uh, components uh, this is that first component is the binding region which actually goes and binds to the sequence in, in the dna where you want to where where you want to create a small nick so there is a small nick created by the cas nickase here after the binding region and this is again uh, this is the region what what the rna peg has for the edit what you want what is the desired rna letters so this again further is re, uh, uh, you know uh, the 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 uh, rt creates the or sends the required uh, um, bases according to the required whatever required rna whatever you wish to so that is repaired so the new one also is synthesized along with this the new dna is synthesized within the native cell with the rt and then this is exter exter external uh, the original sequence is removed by the in endogenous endonucleases and here you create the new dna by the rt and this is a mismatch now so this mismatch is re uh, recognized by the endogenous cell repair mechanism and is uh, again uh, repaired according to the using this template the new template is being used as the uh, as the uh, uh, original template now and the new dna is synthesized according to it and then you have the complete new fully edited thing here so this is basically uh, sans you know, double strand breaks and reduces off targets to a minimal level so these are the second technology second uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, this thing is uh, level of uh, editing is at the gene transcriptional level where you do not modify the gene but you modify the promoter the promoter that actually controls the expression of the genes so this can be done through deactivated cas9 where you where you do not want to knock out or knock in any gene but you just want to uh, change the uh, promoter sequences so here you can introduce random deletions in the promoter either you can create disruptions or creation of tar new target transcription bind binding sites in the promoter you can insert uh, fragments that can enhance the expression of the uh, downstream genes and also you can modify the 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 uh, expression of the promoters by D by using dcas9 dna methylases or demethylases so this is uh, basically why epg you know meditating through uh, histones uh, changing the, the levels of expression so this has been used so this decastine deactivated castine by both the catalytic dopins are not working they are not creating any double strand breaks but this is tagged to uh, certain uh, 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 fluorescence proteins to see a live imaging of of, of internal uh, se uh, structures for example here dynamic telomere uh, movements can be seen through this and also for activation and repression of genes so if you want to over express a gene or uh, suppress a gene you can use dcas9 with a sub, uh, uh, domain with an activator domain like the vp64 or you can use it with a suppressor domain and thereby increase the expression in plants so this has been used in rice uh, so uh, the the third level of uh, control uh, tools that control the post transcriptional or uh, they work at the post transcriptional or the translational level and this uh, majorly has uh, uh, like editing of mrna binding sites in the mrna binding regions where you can mediate the mrna regulation further so those uh, can be uh, done through base editors like ab cb or uh, through prime editing now and base editing of the intron donor or the uh, acceptor sites for in, in introducing uh, splicing uh, mrna uh, interfering the mrna splicing so you create new functionalization or new variants of the same gene same uh, uh, gene and then uh, the most importantly used in uh, plants is this uh, uh this this elimination of the urf the upstream orfs uh, and this has not yet been used in plant but it can be used as insertion in a promoter through an uh, nhg or hdr mediated insertions which can lead to increase in the uh, downstream uh, in, uh, expression of genes so uh, there is an example here where they have used the ab editors uh, adenine uh, base editors to introduce delaying in 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 pla in, in flowering in uh, arabidopsis by mutating uh, one one a to g mutation in in this gene ft protein they have created the delayed the flowering 
similarly in this pds1 uh, pds3 gene in brassica they have tried to uh, create a, 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 a mutation which leads to the albino 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 uh, this white phenotype so through uh, from this flowers red flowers you become white flowers so so the such new functionalization uh, is uh, opening avenues for plant genome editing and it can be used as the term should be used as <coughs> precision breeding not <coughs> what we generally use so uh, this is the example where editing of the urf the upstream orf uh, leads to the overexpression or increase in the downstream genes so here in case of arabidopsis and let use these uh, these two genes uh, have uh, increased the expression of the downs and led to the increase in the foliar ascorbic acid level so this is all due to the use of this technology so the main important uh, issue is reduction of off targets the targeting should be specific so everything is based on that so if you want to make the targeting specific you need to you can do it by various ways so people have published and shown that we can control this so this is not that off targets is always there there are minimal off targets but you can finally reduce them more by creating uh, creating computational tools that can uh, you know design optimize the designing of the guide rna it is basically the designing of the guide rna that creates the specificity and nothing else so if you create uh, optimization of uh, this guide rna this leads to increased uh, cas9 effectivity then uh, as as a bib, uh, anna also said that there are several variants now people are trying to uh, work on that have uh, uh, altered pam requirements like C cas1 requires this uh, as pam and cpf1 or cas12 requires this as pam so this this has to be uh, you know uh, there are mut mutation mutate mutated what versions of these that can be used for genome editing that have less restricted pam requirements then there are new mo molecules that have been identified through uh, in the soil and in the gut microflora which have certain anti crispr activity and these are all uh, the phage the phage is trying to uh, break down the cas activity so that it can infect the bacteria back so this the, these anti crispers have been now evolved in the phages and these can finally be used or repurposed to reduce the off target activities of cas9 so scientists are looking on on those lines also so genome free you can use the rn you can use the ribonucleic proteins and the cas9 in vitro and then target it into the into the system so here you are not putting any backbone no gene vectors nothing so this is geno, geno, genome genome uh, in the on the level of biosafety this is uh, clear, totally clear you are not putting any vector backbone anything any gene simply the proteins up in the cas9 protein and the ribonucleic proteins the tracer the crispr together you'd synthesize in vitro on your table and then shoot it into the plant so it creates uh, reduces off targets so this is what they have done they've used protoplasts for transfecting these and they've used callus and finally they have found minimal off targets similarly reducing the nhej pathway by using inhibitors of uh, the enzymes that are involved in this pathway there's for example dna ligase 4 is an important pathway enzyme of this people have used inhibitors to reduce this pathway and enhance the hdr pathway also as i said previously there's several screens that can be used to screen uh, uh, you can in, uh, use the entire library of of the genome and use it for creating mutant populations that can be then genotyped for beneficial alleles so this also creates less off targets because you're choosing what you want people have also tried to fuse the catalytic domain of foc1 which is highly specific which is used in zdfns and talens they are zdfn and talens do not have off target effects they have very minimal target but only because of the protein engineering people call them uh, cumbersome but the foc1 has uh, works as a dimer and it is high specificity if it's if it's uh, uh, fused with the cas9 deactivated cas9 it can reduce uh, off target effects and um, you can choose different delivery ve vehicles like vi antiviral antivirals and uh, the nanoparticles to target uh, shoot meristems and other other uh, 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 pollen and seed and also there are different improvisation of the dna delivery methods also important so all these methodologies have been used throughout the uh, world for improving uh, several traits in plants 
and uh, you can see uh, the the cacao plant has been uh, made virus resistant uh, in africa they have produced fungal resistant uh, bananas and grapes uh, they have produced more corn and uh, uh, rice grains under drought so using this technology people have also made decaffeinated coffee they have uh, produced uh, gluten free wheat which is important for celiac patients for anti browning mushrooms for increased shelf life and uh, flavored tomatoes so it, now i would just take two more minutes to explain what we have done in, in our lab using this technology actually we have tried to mutate the uh, we've tried to uh, develop glyphosate tolerant maize uh, uh, rice and pigeon pea lines that are that protect uh, your plant from the uh, from the from the damage that the herbicide herbicide causes the herbicide is used to kill the weeds for better weed management but it also affects our our, our crop the main crop so to uh, this is why because this important enzyme which is a path, which is an important pa pathway enzyme of the shikimate uh, acid pathway creates aromatic amino acids so this is how glyphosate targets it targets this enzyme so that these amino acids are not produced so this pathway is only in plants so glyphosate is not toxic to human beings it is only toxic to plants so whatever claims that people make that glyphosate is and cancer is and uh, whatsoever uh, i don't believe no scientist should believe because this is only affecting affecting the 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 plants and this pathway only happens in plants in the chloroplast so we not no not do not need to worry about glyphosate so this what what glyphosate does it it mimics this second substrate of this enzyme and goes and binds in place of this and stops the production of these amino acids so that's why the weeds die but simultaneously our main crop also dies but if you make them glyphosate tolerant why we we've, we've just Uh, uh, remove the three amino acids and we've replaced them with three new amino, uh, amino acids this is what we have done and it's made them glyphosate tolerant so this can be used in 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 the in the thing so <coughs> this is what uh, a video where the the glyphosate binding site is shown yeah these are the three amino acids in the mute in the, in the wild type and this has been changed so the the active site is changed because of these three mutations so the glyphosate no more can bind to it now it doesn't affect the plant at all our 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 plant but it will definitely affect the weed so so this is what so we i'm shooting through this so this is what we have uh, identified through homology donor repair we've introduced these three mutations we've given a template we've made a double strand break cut out a small piece and replaced it with another piece which has the three mutations so this is what our plants are happily growing while spraying the glyphosate while the control plants are simply dying this is the second gener first generation the second generation and uh, these are the all uh, parameters photosynthetic parameters that are checked this is a treated control when you treat the control with glyphosate and these this is the untreated control and these are all the trans uh, edited lines so they are behaving better than the treated control so th so this is the activity of the enzyme it's 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 showing increased activity on all the lines you can see better than the treated control we've checked the uh, she, the, the substrate of this enzyme so the substrate uh, uh, when you compare with the treated control you see the substrate is lying there that means there is no activity of this enzyme whereas when you see the other edited lines there is uh, substrate is being utilized so there is less amount so that means the enzyme is working that edited in the edited lines as the control and this is the aromatic amino acids we've uh, quantified uh, it is abundance when the glyphosate is being given so this these three all all are all edited lines showing enhanced amino acid so in 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 order to increase the glyphosate tolerance we've also increasing the amino acid profile so we nutritionally improving them so uh, there are no de uh, uh, defects in the cobs they are all good enough with all the good seeds so this is what we've done in the rice also so this is the rice plants that we have developed here yeah so i'm just about to finish this is, this is over this is we've done the same analysis in rice so this is what i want to thank the funding agencies icgb core the icr the agricultural main, ag main agricultural funding is coming from here and they gi give us huge funds not not like dbt drd and dsd so i really thank them icgb and all my partners and i thank serena and serena and andres for the patience and digo
Thank you.